Hey everybody, thanks for coming to dance with me. I'm Laura and today we're going to be talking about part two of the Big Apple. I found an armful of sweetness and I'm happy as can be because that armful of sweetness belongs to me. My perfect picture of neatness is with me constantly because that picture of neatness belongs to me. Yes, I fell, but I know I acted wise. I Sweetness belongs to me. But first, thank you people of Patreon for helping to make this video free for everybody in the world, including people like you. And I really appreciate your support for me. If you want to join them, it's a voluntary subscription. The link is in the description. I wanted to start with part two because honestly, I think it's a little bit harder. Fewer people know it and it's much easier for me to film by myself. I will not be dancing it to the actual song because this video will get flagged. Instead, I will be dancing out to my beautiful Brooks Promo Beats. If you want the actual song, check out the actual clip. The link's in the description and it is amazing. Also, I have a history about the Big Apple line dance that I highly recommend you check out. It was so interesting for me to look up. The Big Apple and the Tranky do have some overlapping choreography possibly because it was choreographed by the same person so if you already know the tranky do it will help if you don't know the tranky do i have a video linked in the description moves you'll use shorty george suzy q half break lock turn jump charleston rocks around the world break a leg let's get started with the kickball change on count eight follow along Thank you. 
let's look at a few details, but the tricky thing about Lindy Hop is that individual style is so important. What is the line between styling and what the move actually is? Even the original dancers didn't all perform the choreography the same way. Ultimately, you draw your own line, which can shift and change as you learn new things. But for now, here are some points that I choose to emphasize based on what seems to be broad agreement among the dancers in the original video. Big thanks to Nathan Bew, who has taken the time to look at every individual Big Apple dancer and has pointed out some discrepancies and agreements in their performance. First, the rock step on seven isn't performed as a rock step on seven. It looks like the dancers jump backwards, which takes the same amount of time. To play with this jump backwards on seven and kick forward with your left on one as though you had just rock stepped. I also really enjoy taking that jump down, though originally it was performed up. One more detail that I just noticed right here in the editing room. When Whitey's Lindy Hoppers jump, their left leg is back. I've been jumping with my right leg back. Now, no one has ever brought this up to me or told me I was wrong, so you do what you like, but I love this. Unfortunately, since I just noticed this, I won't be doing it for the video. Second, the rock step kick step. To me, thinking like that helps keep the footwork straight, but it's obviously not danced like that. During the rock step kick step, think of flicking your feet forward. Third, the slide back. Now, I had not noticed this detail until Nathan pointed it out, but during the slide back, the dancers are actually clapping on eight, and Frankie Manning, the choreographer, somehow magically manages to collapse and extend a miracle I am still working on today. Okay, let's practice all those changes to a higher tempo to give it a little more kick. Keep going, we'll build the next phrase together.
Let's do it from the top. A few more details. On that transition back into the rocks, many of the dancers get low on count three. A beautiful effect that I don't have in my muscle memory yet, so I'm gonna be inconsistent in this video. All right, the next phrase is just a lot of little nameable chunks that you need to memorize. You got boogie back, one eight of basic shorty George, two eights of shorty George with a fun rhythm. I remember this rhythm by saying seven, step, step, triple step, 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 triple basic Charleston. Around the world and that knee slap rhythm from the Tranky Do. All right, we'll leave it at that for now. Let's build up all those parts and run through it together. me I wonder who I wonder who he can be somebody loves me I wish I knew who he can be worries me for every guy who passes by I shout hey maybe you were meant to be my lover Baby, somebody loves me. I wonder who. Maybe it's you.
put what we have together at a nice slow tempo. Okay, now things get a little complicated for me to do by myself. In the first half of the choreography, the half that is not in this video, you start with a partner. The next section of the choreography is a jump Charleston section, wherein you interact with that partner by jump Charlestoning around them. Let's build up the movement and then talk about who goes where when. <laughs> having trouble transitioning between the Jump Charleston and the Suzy Q, think of triple step of the Jump Charleston as a trip stomp off, and that will help you be on the proper foot. All right, let's get around each other. You have partner A and partner one, because there are no number twos in my book. When you start, partner A is on the left, partner one is on the right. During the first jump Charleston, partner A crosses in back, partner one crosses in front. During the second jump Charleston, partner one crosses in back, partner A crosses in front. Now you're back where you started. 
land on eight, peck it out, and fall off the lock turn. How much does each person move side to side? That depends on you, your partner, and the group that you're in. For me, I find that moving backwards is a very natural feeling, but moving forwards can feel kind of weird. However, if we both move backwards, obviously that doesn't work out. So when you cross in back, make it big and decisive. And when you cross in front, see if you can move yourself forward or at least stay more in place. And that will make the cross backwards -er job easier. All right, let's practice moving that jump charleston together. Now, when I cross in front, I am actually Susie cueing to the right on my right foot, which is backwards and not what they do in the choreography. I'm just doing that so I can loop it easily on video. Feel free to do that with me. I think it's a fun skill. Or Susie cue in place, or Susie cue around in the circle, or however you need to to make this repeatable for you. Something that helps me move my Charleston wherever I need it to go is bouncing my foot. Every time my foot comes up off the floor, I can move it further down whichever line I need to progress down. Side note, I do this on pretty much all my basics. All right, after this, home stretch. You have a fall off the lock turn into boogie backs or boogie in place or freestyle, which lasts for a minute. After that, you have a half break lock turn into linking arms with your partner, into break a leg, into exit. You made it. Note, I will not be linking arms with my partner because I have not figured out how to do that yet. Let's practice the pieces of that last section. Fall off the lock turn into boogie backs. break into the lock turn into a break a leg. For the original styling of the break a leg, you can see the footwork is pretty straightforward, but there is a lot of style that goes into it. Try wiggling your knees. Try moving your body up and down. I really enjoy playing with my hips. Have some fun. And now if you need counts, here's the whole routine with count. All right, here we go. A five, six, a five, six, seven, eight, a one, two, three, five, a six, seven, eight, a one, two, three, five, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, a seven, eight, a one, two, three, five, seven, one, three. Five, seven, one, three, five, seven, eight, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, three, five, six, seven, one, three, five, six, seven, eight, a one, three, five, seven, a one, two, three, five, six, seven, and a one, two, three, four, five, a six, seven, eight, one, a two. Three, four, a six, seven, eight, a one, two, three, four, a six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a one, three, five, 
A seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, three, five. A seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a one, two, three, five, seven, eight, a one, two, three, four, five, six, and freestyle. Do what you want. Freestyle. Do what you want. Freestyle. Here comes the break. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, seven, and one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven. You did it! All right, let's put all of it together. Good luck, here we go. I found an armful of sweetness, and I'm happy as can be, because that armful of sweetness belongs to me. My picture of neatness is with me constantly because that picture of neatness belongs to me. Yes, I fell, but I know I acted wise. I can tell that I'm really found a prize. I love my arm full of sweetness. My heart is gay and free because that arm full of sweetness belongs to me. Hope you had fun and learned a lot and if you did click like and subscribe and put in a comment and all that YouTube algorithm stuff and if you enjoyed the music you know it's the Brooks Promo Orchestra and you can find a link to it in the description and half of the money that I get from this channel goes towards organizations that support African diasporic artists and art because Lindy Hop is a black dance and the best way to learn how to do this dance I think is to dance.